Hi everyone, my name is Elisa Labrati. I am the daughter of Kathy Labrati, Kathy Labrati's Antique Dolls, and today I'm going to talk with you about four dolls that are in our stock uh, made by the firm of Leon Casimir Brew. Um, they're all very varied examples, very special bebés uh, from all different parts of the I guess you could call it the reign of the brew firm. Uh, they were very famous in their day, known for exceptional quality. Today, if you mention a brew bebe to collectors, they get very excited. These are considered to be some of the most beautiful antique dolls ever made, and um, you just want to look at them and you can really see why. Um, so I'm going to talk about them in size places, not chronologically, although I am going to talk about the chronology, but a little bit about the firm. Um, the Brew Firm existed for 32 years. Uh, it was founded by Leon Casimir Brew, who is very famous. Um, of course, this is all in France, the uh, height of the French doll making period, the Belle Époque, the golden age of antique dolls. Um, so they started out making fashion poupées and moved into bebés. In fact, Leon Casimir Brew really innovated in the market of the poupée with different bodies, as we're going to see. He was succeeded um, by Chevreau, Henri Chevreau, and then by Gérard, although uh, Chevreau and Gérard worked together. Um, so we have a lot of different body examples, too, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. And many of them are in their original costumes, which is really, really exciting for collectors who value the antique textiles as well as the dolls. So I'm actually going to start over here with our biggest girl. Um, she is a fabulous Brujun R in her incredible original couturier costume. Um, it's a, a beautiful printed silk. It's totally sheared at the bodice, as you can see. It has these beautiful silk ribbon streamers at the sides. Um, she's just a fabulous doll. So uh, this is from the later era. Um, post Chevreau. Uh, she's a Brujun R. And this particular model is very special because of her size. She's pretty big. Um, her beautiful blue eyes and of course the spectacular costume. Um, look at that face. You're going to see it's very different from the other faces that we see here. It's kind of got a more pert expression. The nose is a little sharper. The lips kind of have a tiny bit of an upturned smile. Uh, and she looks like she's ready to play. Um, and of course, she has that open mouth, which is very uh, interesting and desirable. This was considered a real innovation um, when Jumeau came out with the Bebe Parlant, the open mouth talking doll. Uh, many other firms followed in their stead. Um, so now we're actually going to move on to the slightly smaller uh, doll that we have here which is a very classic Brujun bebe. Um, this model is just amazing. She is in an all original couturier costume. I'm gonna turn her around so you can really see the back of this gown because the bustle is just out of control. And look at that hat. See her from all the different angles. She's amazing. We got her and her sister actually from um, one collection, uh, her sister has since been sold, but they were a pair of fabulous brews um, from the early pre chevreau period. Uh, she has the three seam body. I'm just going to open it up so you can kind of see. Um, she doesn't have the chevreau legs, uh, and thus we can date her face to be earlier, an earlier example. Um, she has very, very soft painting of features, delicate blushing, beautiful mohair wig, all original undergarments, and of course the famous bisque hands uh, that grew wonderful at creating. Um, and she also has her beautiful original leather shoes that are very desirable. They're not particularly marked brew, but they are stamped um, with the name of another firm, uh, the dolls were often dressed by the shops that they were sold in. Um, Brew did not only make for himself to sell, for the firm itself to sell, but they distributed in other great stores as well, such as Au Bon Marché, um, Au Nain Bleu, all of these wonderful French boutiques that would sell all the different um, companies' uh, wares, particularly these fabulous brews. Now, I'm going to talk about this wonderful girl who is the first of our two chevreau bodied examples over here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. She's another uh, early example with the 
three seam body. We only have one shiver body example. Please excuse me. Um, she's wearing a spectacular uh, French silk original costume. And this dress is just beautiful. I, I really love the delicate details. You can really see the craftsmanship or more likely craftswomanship that went into the sewing of these costumes. Um, not to mention her delightful little chapeau um, and her beautiful bebe pin. And of course, my actually, I, I love the undergarments myself, and she has an outstanding set of undies with this just this delightful little edging here. Um, she has original brew marked shoes in her trousseau, um, which she has a, a 25 piece, I believe, trousseau in a trunk. Of course, we didn't want to have it here. It'd be a little cramped with that, but she has an additional dress. Uh, she has additional undergarments. She has a purse. She has a muff. She has a lot of really fun things. Um, and including these additional shoes, gloves, um, really a, a grade A brew in every way. If you look for that face too, she has the most classic face of any of the dolls here. She's considered to have the real brew look that a lot of collectors go for. She's really from the golden age of the brew doll, considered to be this th those three years in the early 1880s where it was considered that brew was making the best product on the market for French bebés, and this is certainly an example of that. And she's right before the transition to the chevreau body, um, which is this little girl over here that I have fondly named Angelique because she looks like a little angel. She's so tiny, I'm gonna pick her up. Um, and take a look at her uh, so you can see. She has an incredible costume as well with this out of control bustle, as I have taken to calling it. Um, the dress, however, is newly made, but in the Bebe style for sure, using original um, Victorian silk fabrics. So you can really see here the sweetest little face with that tiny hint of tongue and those kind of oversized blue eyes. Um, now, something that a lot of people are sort of afraid to talk about, um, at least many dealers are, for they fear that it creates a discrepancy in the dolls, is that the brew factory um, it did not always stay uniform with the sizes marked on the heads and the sizes marked on the plates. Over the years, we've handled so many dolls, that so many brew dolls, that have had a different number on the head and a different number on the plate. So when you look inside, you can certainly see that none of the mechanisms or uh, the neck connection to the plate has been fiddled with at all. It's 100% original, um, but this doll has a different number marked on her head and her plate, as does this one. Um, it's not an uncommon occurrence, and uh, you can really see that the heads look proportionate to the bodies because these are children, and children's heads naturally are larger than their bot like larger proportionally to their bodies. Um, the skull grows more slowly than the rest of the body. So uh, it really was one of the ingenious um, ideas that Brew had. I think it was kind of a, a reconsideration when they numbered the heads at first. They realized that the ones on the one plate, the two on the two plate, the three on the three plate, something about it just the head seems small, especially coming from the poupées who have very tiny heads compared to the rest of their bodies because they're long and lean and like ladies. So when they started making the children, the heads, the numbers started to get bigger. So for example, this one has a uh, size seven head and I believe a four or a five plate, but she looks perfectly fine, doesn't she? Now in the earlier brews, this was not so much the case as uh, a lot of them had the same size heads and the same size plates. And of course over here, the body is not marked with a number. Um, but it's very fascinating to see, as you see more and more of these dolls, you learn the little secrets of the company. And that's a really special little secret that I've always found to be fascinating about them. Anyway, uh, that's all that I'm gonna say about these beauties, but I'm gonna try to make some more of these videos. Um, Kathy herself is gonna make some of these videos so you can uh, see more of our wonderful dolls that we have the absolute pleasure of handling, um, even if briefly, and if you have any requests for particular dolls you'd like us to do videos on, just leave a comment down below and we will be happy to do that. So thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed it.